Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center. Starting a little bit early because I wanted to show you something really cool that's happening right now at Hammonasset. And I'm going to flip the camera so you can see. You can see that layer of fog. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but there's a layer of fog coming off of the snow. So fog is formed when warmer air passes over a cold surface, either ice or snow or even just cold ground, but more commonly cold water. Uh, the scientific term for this is advection, and that is just a movement of fluid. So it's the moist air is moving or the moisture is moving off of the surface and coming up into the air. So right now we have advection happening right here at Hammonasset. I hope it's showing up on camera as clearly as I can see it. Uh, but I started a little early because it was going away really quickly. Uh, the sun was out earlier and it was only out for maybe 10 minutes. But while the sun was out, the just you could see it everywhere. This fog just coming off of these cold surfaces. So I wanted to try and catch this live on camera. So right over there between those trees, you can see there's a nice layer of fog. It is moving from left to right. Uh, so there's the, the breeze is blowing it straight at me and blowing it across from, from left to right. So today we're going to do a, a very special program. And I've actually changed it slightly once I got out here and saw what we have for, for an environment. But I wanted to thank everyone that's been watching our videos. We're, we're averaging over 300, actually almost 400 people watching these videos. Most of you are not watching them live, but I want to let you know if you're, if you're not catching these live, please let your friends, your neighbors, your school teachers, particularly school teachers, homeschool groups, know about these programs. This is a great resource. And I'm hearing a lot from a lot of teachers across the state that they're having a hard time getting the kids outside, getting the kids to be active. So look for my programs in the future to be trying to get a little bit more activity out of you all that are watching. So with that being said, also I wanna remind everyone, the program on Saturday was fantastic about eagles. So now we've done two programs on eagles from two different groups. One had a live eagle, one was a PowerPoint. Very different programs, lots of information you will learn. I had no idea that an eagle had over 7,000 feathers. So there's so much to learn from watching these uh, videos. Make sure you tune in as often as possible. Make sure you follow us and like us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel where we're inching our way towards being able to do YouTube Live as well. These programs are going to be Tuesday through Friday at 11. And coming up next week, the 24th, I'm going to start my program late because we have a guest that's going to be on. I'm not going to say who it is yet, but we have a special guest and they can't make it down here until afternoon. So look for the program probably to start around, I'd say, 1.30, maybe 1 o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll narrow that down and let you all know uh, about our guest speaker coming up next week. And yeah, so we're gonna be doing a really cool thing. Today, we're gonna be walking the Cedar Island Trail. Now I've done this program many times, so look back and you, you'll be able to see every few months how much this trail has changed. So starting back, I think the first one I did was last April, so we're coming up on a year of doing these programs every, uh, sometimes it was four weeks, sometimes uh, eight or nine weeks, but you'll be able to compare this over time. Now I wanna thank everybody who's uh, putting up where they're messaging from. Let me give you a quick weather report here. So it was a bit warmer when the sun was out. I would say it was close to 50. Now, well, I'd say it was warmer than 50. Now I'd say it's about 50. It's a little chill, but really nice out today. Lots of ice around uh, because of the freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing that we've had, but a lot of it is melting today. And before we get out onto the trail, I had to stop. The reason I started here 
was I saw this on the ground. So I want you to take a look at this right here. That is really cool, right? It looks kind of like a little dog poop on the ground. Actually, this is a casting from a worm. So the worms dig holes and then they uh, squirt, the, uh, squirt the dirt out and create these little castings. So I noticed that as I was walking by. Really cool and probably because it's been so warm, the worms have been a little bit active here. I doubt that there was snow on that, although it is possible. All right, now I'm gonna pan over and show you our salt marsh. And I want you to all look and see if you notice something cool about the salt marsh. Did everyone see that? Let's go back again. Hello, Tampa, Florida. I bet it's nice and warm in Tampa. Right about there begin, actually it's back a little bit, there are Canada geese out here in the salt marsh. When I got in this morning, they were wandering around the parking lot out in front of the nature center, but they've moved off into the marsh. They do not look like they're feeding for the most part. They're preening and or taking a nap. So they've gotten a, a bit of food. They will have to eat again, obviously, throughout the day they will eat. But that gave me the idea as I was walking out to the Cedar Island Trail, which my plan today was to talk about Cedar Island itself, because I remember I've, I've never talked really about Cedar Island. And then we'd look at buds and stems of some of the trees and start identifying them. But when I saw those geese, I thought, so, you know, what is it that they're eating? So I thought we'd take some time here to look for the things that they might eat. So if we look here, we've got the stem, past, past year stem of a flower. Uh, it's really hard to identify on this time of year. It almost looks like yarrow. Um, oh, I'm blanking on the name. This is the yellow one that's butterfly. It's in the yarrow family. Anyway, if you look here, this is what they're after. There are seeds here. There are little seed pods. So that's one of the things they're after. If we look here, this might be water droplets, but there might be no, those are water droplets, but you might find seeds still on the grasses. And all of these seeds, uh, these plants that are bare of seeds right now, they've dropped their seeds. So the birds are going to be poking around through the grasses, under the snow, trying to get under the snow, finding these bare patches, looking for the seeds that have fallen from all of these plants. Let's go over here, look at some goldenrod. See if we have any seeds left up on it or if it's all fallen down. So there's some seed right there. And this is what not only those Canada geese, but the small perching birds that you'll see poking around, just continually moving through these grassy areas. They just keep on moving. They keep on searching. The horned larks, the Lapland long spurs, the snow buntings, juncos in your backyard. You probably have juncos. And they spend lots of time on these bare open patches looking for seed. So you may think there can't possibly be any seed left. But remember, these plants drop thousands and thousands of seeds. So there are going to be seeds that are missed and they have to keep on searching. And in the long run, generally, there's going to be seeds that they miss completely. And that's what grows into the plants for next year. Okay, now, if you remember, this was mowed since the last time I did this, uh, and this was selectively mowed. If you notice, there are things that are left, and that's because they were mowing invasive species that were popping up. This is fine for the habitat because all those grasses that we had back over there will be able to grow up. It's going to be the first thing popping up in the springtime but we've knocked back the invasives uh, and some of the 
Well, there are some trees left in there. It looks like some fruit trees popping up, some apples. Um, but some of the twiggy things get mowed down as well to keep this as a field. All right, so we're coming up on our Cedar Island Trail. And I wanted to talk today about Cedar Island itself. Cedar Island was an island. It's not considered an island anymore, just like Meg's was an island, and now it's more like a point or a peninsula. Cedar Island is, is the same connected to Meg's Island now uh, through a, a bar of land. Extreme high tides, though, the, the land is completely covered over. And when land, when you get a peninsula like that that gets covered over, there's a special term for it. And it is the uh, Dardanelles, I believe. And that will be a, a spit of land that gets covered part of the time. All right, so we're going to be looking, got to find some nice low buds here. Well, let's look at this one. This is an easy one to identify. You don't really need the buds, the bark, or the stem for this. Uh, this is hawthorn, and all you need are the thorns. So this is an easy one to identify in the winter. It's easy to identify in the summer. That's a thorn right there from the hawthorn. The bud of the hawthorn, just a, a simple, very rounded bud, right? Uh, the bark, young bark is smooth, so the twig bark is going to be smooth. And these are things that are going to be more important for others that are harder to identify. But this is a typical thing that happens with the stems. The stems have nice smooth bark, and then as the you get down to the trunk of the tree, you're going to get rough bark. Uh, and then you start to actually, there are bark patterns that you might see. So I saw Bob is watching, and um, he'll be able to chime in when we see some others, if, if we see a bark pattern that it's easy to identify. But that's a, and the, the, another thing about the hawthorn, it doesn't get into a tree. This is more of a shrub. This one is what, this one's probably 15 feet tall. So uh, that's going to be typical of the hawthorn. Now we can take a look. Can't see the buds very well on this one, but this one's kind of easy to identify too because of the bark. We have some sassafras here. Sassafras is fast growing. It does tend to grow. You see this is not a straight uh, trunk at all. This is the straightest part down here, and then it immediately goes left, right, straight, up, left, right. Um, so, and then the buds, can't see them very well, but they're bigger, bigger than the hawthorn. But this is our sassafras. Well, we find so let's try and find a shorter one. And the young bark for sassafras, before it gets the pattern that we get here, it will show up with um, smooth green bark. And then it starts to get a pattern in the green. Very cool. Bob wants to know if there's any fruit left on the hawthorn, and I did not see any, but let's go back, see if I missed any. I'm not seeing any fruit on the hawthorn. Uh, and that's one of the things, as you get later into the season, all those fruits that can be left, they start to disappear because all those birds need to eat them. Now, Birds eating fruit, generally that's the tree's method of reproduction and moving is the birds eat the fruit and then they, um, they drop the seeds when they go to the bathroom. They drop the seeds all over the place and it gives uh, a good chance for fruit to spread. I'm being very cautious. A lot of people have walked this trail and turned it to ice, so it's pretty slick on this part of the trail. Here we go, here's a sassafras that's getting, this one's a bit smaller than the last one, and we can look at, no we can't. <laughs> These lower branches 
these let me zoom out a little bit uh out there we go these all the buds are broken off of these so wow i don't see any buds on this one i wonder if this is dead not seeing any buds but it's a cool tree success for us fast growing soft wood uh, not something you want to make furniture out of. I'm not actually sure if they use the wood for anything. Well, here's one. This is so a, a cherry tree is going to be really smooth and it has these little lateral cells on it, these white uh, stripes. So when it's young, it looks a lot like a birch. And then as it gets older, it gets, you know, the bark gets really super rough. But young ones do get confused for, wow, it is slippery. Do get confused for birch. All right. Not seeing. Now, what do we have here? This looks like some uh, honeysuckle. That's an invasive. We don't really want to have honeysuckle around and I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, shad bush in here again it's a shrub I'd really like to be finding some oh here we go so this is again cherry and you can see the little white dashes on there that look very similar to a birch when a birch is young the buds, let's get a good bud there. So you can see it's opposite branching. You have a uh, branch, branch, sorry, alternate branching. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. So you have a branch there, 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 as it staggers up. Sorry, bud, but the branches do the same thing. They're not coming off the same side. So if it's opposite, there would be one directly opposite of that branch. Wearing yak tracks. I am not. I'm just wearing my regular old Sorrells. All right, let's... Uh, keep going. So I realized that I've done this trail many, many times now, and I've never explained much about Cedar Island. So a little more information about Cedar Island. Most of the houses, and there are what, 54 houses, I believe. Most of those were constructed before 1950. Many of them have been renovated. Um, but I don't believe that you will ever be able to build another one out there because of the new hurricane regulations and things like that. All right, so the sun is back out. And you can see there's no fog coming off of the marsh. You can see there's fog coming off of the sound over there. And some nice low clouds, some cumulus clouds up there. Look at those beautiful clouds. And now it feels like it's warmer than, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's warmer than 50 now. I wonder if there's something I'm allergic to in the winter. All right. So if you're out hiking in any one of Connecticut State Parks, you still need to have your mask with you because you need to mask up if you can't keep social distance. And you need to keep social distance. Um, I would suggest doing both. If you're near people, wear your mask. Keep your six feet away. If you're on a trail like I am all by myself, you can go without the mask. But please consider continuing to wear your masks. All right. There's a nice small tree that we can look at the buds of. This is an oak. And if we look here... 
it's so I'm cheating. <laughs> Look, there's a piece of a leaf and we see a rounded lobe. So I know this is a piece of a white oak. I just cheated, but we're looking at buds here. Look at the multiple buds on the ends of the stems. That is not typical of trees. A lot of times you're only going to get one, maybe two buds. So there's a bunch of buds all in a cluster, cluster of buds. You've got the buds coming down the stem. Again, smooth stem, and we'll find it a big white oak. I can show you what it turns into, but it usually starts out smoother. The stem is smoother, and then as it gets bigger, it will get the darker uh, or rougher bark. And if you look in the back there, there's a couple of white oaks back there. You can see how rough the bark turns into as it gets larger. And the white oaks have very pale bark. I don't believe, though, that's how it got its name. I think it got its name from its wood, not from the bark. Both are light. Bob says the bright sunshine can make you sneeze. That would explain it. And I think Rob's saying that he's been sneezing a lot too. Here's a hickory. I wish I could find a small hickory. Show you the buds of the hickory. I always like the hickory. I really want to get out to the end of this trail though and show you Cedar Island. See if we have any birds. So right now at Hammonass, it is a great time for bird watching. We've had some red crossbills in the park, lots of birds of prey. Uh, the rough-legged hawk has been spotted numerous times. Northern Harriers, Cooper's hawks. And if you missed it, I put up a uh, Cooper's hawk last i guess it was friday just before i left work so go back and look for the cooper sock program that was pretty cool i think only about 20 people got to see it live but over 300 have watched the video so now you can see we're not very high off of the marsh here but Cedar Island is also not very high off the marsh. This is actually part of the peninsula that connects to Cedar Island. That's why we call it the Cedar Island Trail. Um, ooh, that was just, uh, I don't know if that's going to show up for you guys. There are little droplets of water in this cedar tree right here, and the sun is sparkling off of them. It looks like somebody has hung Christmas lights in the cedar tree. It is so cool. Let's see some thumbs up if anybody else saw those little twinklies besides me. See little droplets of water just hanging there? That's so cool. Actually, are they still frozen? Nope, they're droplets of water. All right. I know I've showed you this before, but this always fascinated me. The storm blew this log up and slammed it into this tree, and they've been pressed together for years now. Pretty cool. If you hike this trail at low tide, you have a very good chance of seeing some seals out on the rocks. So I always encourage people to try and get out here at low tide. All right, so. Here we are, there's some nice sunshine out here. Tide is covering most of the rocks that the seals would be hauled out on, so I doubt we're gonna see any seals. But this peninsula, oh, Northern Harrier. How cool is that? Come and, s no, it's now going away from us. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but far out, if you see that sand, 
bar. It just came up on the left side of the sandbar. It's going away from us pretty quickly. It has a nice little white rump on it. And that is going to be too far, I think, for you to see. There, it's flying way off. It's over the water now, heading across the water. Another bird just popped up next to it. And do we have two? Oh, I wish they were coming this direction. There might be two Northern Harriers at the same time. That does not happen very often. I did not see the white rump on the second one though, so I'm not positive that it was a Oh, there's, uh, what is that, some kind of merganser flying by there. And it looks like one of the harriers, or one of the birds I thought was a harrier, is coming right to left. It is a harrier. It's going right over some Canada geese. Another pack of Canada geese over there. I just saw a biker go by on the Willard Island Trail. You can see the low clouds moving right across here. Those are, oh, the Harrier's getting closer. Um, these are, I would say, are between a cloud and fog. So what happens as the fog comes up and it blows across, it's going to break up as it gets higher and become more of a cloud than fog. So this is a fog bank breaking up. Our Harrier is circling around over here. I love the Harriers. It's always uh, a good sign though when they disappear because that means we're getting into springtime. Okay, so the peninsula, let's zoom back out. This is the peninsula and you would have to walk all the way over there, circle that water. And you see how it, it's not completely covered right now, right along here. There's a patch of water and then the Hamanassa River on the other side. There are times that that is completely covered and that's what they call the Dardanelles. And the Harrier just landed right off the tip of my finger and I lost it in the marsh, but it just landed there. It didn't look like it was catching prey. It looked like it just landed maybe to rest. But let's get back to Cedar Island. So you continue out the peninsula and right back over here, those beginning of all those cedar trees, that is Cedar Island all the way along there. This end of Cedar Island, the closer end, they're not allowed to build. That's part of the wildlife preserve, wildlife um, management area. And then the far end is where those 54 houses are. Now there's no electricity out there. Uh, they are, you know, some of the houses have solar panels and there are um, a lot of propane generators to, to power the houses. They don't have water over there. There is a water line that goes to a fire hydrant. And when I first started here at Hammonasset, we were actually on the route that the fire department would take. They would have to drive that peninsula there in order to get out there to put out fires. And when we built this platform, uh, the fire department said, hey, how are we supposed to get out there? You just built a platform on the end of our, our road. And we said, there's no way you're getting past here with a fire truck. Uh, the road, the trees have grown in too close on the Cedar Island Trail. Uh, the bridge at the far end was too small for a fire truck. And you would sink out here. There's no solid land left to get out to Cedar Island. So uh, one of the things to push them to get a water line out there to that fire hydrant. So when we look over here. So you can see there's a rock popping up uh, right about there. To the left of that is where the, at low tide, the, the seals, there are some rocks that the seals really like to hang out on. Could you walk to Cedar Island from where you are? At low tide, you could, but it is illegal. This is a wildlife management area. This is one of the things that we're constantly battling here at the park 
People think that because we're not in bird nesting season that it's fine to walk out there. Uh, the problem is there's no way that you can walk out there without damaging the habitat and you are permanently or long-term damaging the habitat by walking out. All of that area over there is soft marshland and a single person walking in a marsh. If I walked out in the marsh and then came back, you would be able to see the damage that I did, my footprints, for months afterward. Uh, so we really want to discourage people. And the other thing about if one person walks out there, you can see those, the path that that person took for such a long period of time that the next person that comes along says, oh, that's a path, and they follow it. So we really don't want people, this part, this beach right here, the only way you can get there, again, is by walking on soft marsh. During nesting season, this area is closed because this beach right here is where the plovers, one of the places where the plovers nest. But we really want to discourage people from going out here at any time of the year because you are damaging that habitat. This is a fragile habitat and it is protected all year long even though there aren't any birds out here, even though the salt marsh looks like everything is dead, you're still not allowed to walk out into it. So let's just keep that in mind. And that being said, can everybody see that path right there? And I'm sure you can. That is a path from wild animals. It could be deer, although generally when I see deer, they don't, in the salt marsh, they don't go over the same path over and over again. So it's probably something like a raccoon uh, that heads out over and tries to forage and then probably goes up upland and climbs a tree for the evening or for the night. So there used to be a path going out to that rock. So I always wondered what animal was going out to the rock. Um, and there's no way that they're living out on that rock. So I always wondered about that, but I guess it's a good place to search for food. I'm really scanning to see if we've got other birds. Now, this is a very warm day, but it is still possible to see snowy owls, even though it's so warm. The snowy owls have, the ones that do migrate south, and not all of them do, and they don't do it every year. But the ones that have migrated south could be coming back up through um, and they it can be at any time of the winter they could be going south or they could be going north so they do not stay still in the winter time the ones that are moving they, they just keep on moving so you always want to keep your eye out if it's winter for those uh, beautiful white birds all right there's little sparrows flitting around in all these brush this brush down here all right let's see if we have any questions looks like uh, bill expected to see snow and there is some snow if you get in uh, an area that stays shady so if you look at the back side of cedar island a little more sheltered a little shadier uh, stays cooler so there's still some snow left there but yeah out here where the snow really bakes down on it not a whole lot of snow left maybe little patches along the far edge over there the same thing over here if we turn on this side not a lot of snow any other questions Steve says they have a fire boat now over in Clinton. Uh, Steve also has a friend that has a cottage on Cedar Island. The house with the widow's walk. Yes, Carol, there is still snow on the trails, that was for sure.
There's a lot of ducks moving around. Probably black ducks. We have mostly black ducks here, but there could be mallards. I did hear uh, from the biologists. So I got to do some netting of ducks last week. We put radio trackers on a couple of them, did the uh, tested for avian influenza. Um, took measurements and, and things on some of them. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but there was a teal in with the other ducks. It didn't get netted with the other ducks, but you can expect to see some, some other, other ducks out here. In the water, we're going to see very different ducks, but out here in the marsh, those black ducks, the mallards, uh, I guess the teal. It's a really cool spot for birds. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions. I want to remind everyone to please tune in on Saturday at 10 o'clock for another one of our wild animal lectures. You can visit MegsPointNatureCenter.org, go to the calendar to sign up on Zoom for the events, or you can watch them live on Facebook. Last week we did have an issue getting it going live on Facebook, but we ended up getting it going. So, uh, And we also had an issue with the sound for a little bit. So there were some technical difficulties, but I appreciate everybody that, that stuck with us and uh, got to enjoy the, that great program uh, from Jeannie Apple on, uh, on Eagles. She will be doing more programs in the future. Uh, you can look for programs from Richard Taylor, who's a, another uh, master wildlife um, conservationist. And then we'll be connecting again. Um, I'm sure A Place Called Hope will be having some programs coming up. Um, and I know we, Lori has talked to Bob, who's I think still watching, about doing some plant and tree walks and talks in the springtime. So lots of programs coming up on Saturdays at 10 o'clock. If you missed one of these programs and want to go back and watch it, you can view it on the Megs Point Nature Center YouTube channel. Also, if you are a school teacher, homeschooling, parent, whoever, and you want to see a program or have a, a topic that you'd like more detail on, please send us a message. I'll be happy to adjust my programs, my schedules, and talk about whichever program you would really like to see. Uh, I am going to be revisiting some of the programs that we did over the past year. You were up to 300 uh, videos now, and I think that some of them it'd be a good idea to, to do like a part two of, so you can look for those coming up. We're also going to be meeting with some very special guest speakers, and I don't know if I should give it away, but we have a very uh, special guest from the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection who's going to be coming on, so really excited. That's next next week, the 24th. Look for that program. So until tomorrow, this is Ranger Russ signing off from the end of the Cedar Island Trail. Again, go to the Virtual Learning Center at MegsPointNatureCenter.org to see all of the videos I've done on the Cedar Island Trail. Uh, they'll be great to watch them back to back if you've got the time. And uh, compare how much the Cedar Island Trail has changed over the years. And I would really love to hear your views, something that you've noticed, the changes on the trail, especially something that I haven't pointed out. So if you could find a change, the change that has happened over time, I would love to hear your point of view. So let's make this more interactive and let's get some comments from all of you, the things that you've seen change over the time period that I've been doing this. All right, until tomorrow, this is Ranger Russ signing off. We'll see you next time.